side. So I have negative. You have to make sure when you're using the negative, you use this button down here, not the subtraction button. We have negative 4.9. When you're looking for a variable, so for instance there, I have a t squared. You do not need to use t. What we're always going to use is the same variable. It's going to be x. x is located right up here. So negative 4.9x squared plus 50t, or 50x, plus 10. So this is your y equals. What this uh, allows you to do right here is put more y values in. So I could have mini graphs on this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the graph function, hit graph, and you're going to get a graph that goes like that. Now, it looks kind of funky. You might not be able to see what it looks like very well. It's really tough for me to determine what this graph looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to play around with the window settings. The existing window settings that we have say that we can go from negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. So from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change this graph so I can get a little bit of a better picture as to what uh, it's looking like. Now, this graph is kind of doing this. The parabola is going up and that's going off the screen and then down. So we're going to try to uh, play around with the window settings to change it a little bit. So, this is the part that may be uh, somewhat difficult for you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change my window settings to be, um, let's see, I'll change, I'll just show you one thing at a time. I'm going to change the Y max to be a little bit different. I'll change it to be 100 and we'll see what this does. So you'll notice that we have a little bit better idea of what the graph looks like. Now, do you see how the graph is kind of on this right hand side? It doesn't go quite high enough. Well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to get rid of some of the X max. I'm going to make this only go to maybe negative 5. Just like so. I'm going to make it go maybe to like 15 on this side. And the graph looked like it needed to go a little bit higher. So let's try going to 150 and see how that does for us. All right. We get a graph that looks pretty reasonable. Why I say that looks pretty reasonable is because we can see it fills up the screen fairly well. Now, so you understand what this means. If I go back to my window, it means I go from negative 5 to 15 on the X. So that's negative 5. That's 15. And then on the y, it goes from negative 10 down here to 150. And so that gives me a good idea as to what the graph looks like. All right, so what I can do with my graphing calculator is I can actually go and, by pressing the second function here, I can take a screenshot, uh, where is it, right here, and get the true colors to the clipboard, and I can paste what this graph is. What I'd like you guys to do when it says graph the quadratic function is you'll just give me a sketch. All right? So that's approximately what the quadratic function looks like in the notes. Now what we have to do is we have to go and find all this inf information about the graph. As a result, what are we looking for down here? Well, it says I want you to get the significance, uh, identify and explain the significance of the intercepts, the coordinates of the vertex, and the domain and range. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first just go and find that information, then I'll talk to you about the significance. So we're looking for, for instance, uh, this vertex, uh, the intercepts here and here, and my domain and range. Got to get your axis of symmetry. That's this little line coming down the middle here. Okay. So maybe what I'll do is I'll also paste it down here just so we can uh, play with this graph a little bit. And so we get something that looks, let's say, like so. Okay. So it wants you to go and identify and explain the significance of the intercepts. Let's start with the intercepts. The big ones that we're looking for are going to be the x-intercept right here and right here. So let's start with those. All right. and so this is where it gets a little bit complicated. What we're going to do when we want your x-intercepts is we're going to go over to your graph and we're going to go second, trace, and we're going to look for the zeros. Remember we talked about that, the zeros too. Okay, and what you're going to do is your graph's going to say left bound like this and you're going to have your little flashing doodad right there. What I want you to do is when we're looking for the intercepts, we have to move your cursor down below the x-axis here and then above it. We always work from left to right. So for this one right here, I'll move down below. Come on. And make sure it's below. You can tell because this has gone to negative even though you can't see it very well. I'm going to hit enter once and then it's going to say right bound. Then you're going to move it above. Okay, Just as long as it's above the x-axis, now hit enter again twice. And we find out that that zero is at negative 1.96. So I'll write negative 0 0.196 comma zero. Okay, That's where that zero is at. The next one we have to go find is this one over here. So we go second trace zero. And we got to move your cursor all the way over this time. It's kind of taxing, takes a while. Okay, so this one, we always work from left to right. So what, when I'm going to hit enter is when it's somewhere above the x-axis this time. So above and then below. That one, it was a below and then above because you're always moving left to right. So I hit enter, and then I put it below. All right. 
it, and I hit enter again. And you might ask what this is, 1e to the negative 11. Actually, your calculator making a little bit of an error right there. That does mean 0. Um, it's just a little bit of a rounding error on its part. So what we found is we found that the x is at, let's say, 10.400. So we have 10.400 and, of course, 0. Those being your two x-intercepts, all right? So we can label these guys. Next thing that we're going to look for is we're going to look for the vertex. All right, so the vertex is this point up here. Of course, it's going to be a maximum. So, so to find the vertex, what you're going to do is you're going to hit second, trace on your calculator, and depending what you're looking for, since we're looking for a maximum, we're going to use four. Okay, if you're looking for a minimum, of course, three. So I hit four, it's going to say the same thing, all right, left bound. So for this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cursor. Again, we always work from left to right. So I'm going to move it to the left side of my vertex. So somewhere right around there, where it's obviously on the left side. So I'm going to hit enter over here, and then enter over here. So I'll just write a little X there and an X there. Okay. I hit enter once, and I'll say right bound. I move it all the way over. I hit enter twice. And we get a maximum of 5.102, comma, 137.55. Five, one. That is your vertex. Okay. So those are the steps to going and generating all these solutions on your uh, your calculator. All right. Um, if we want to find out, let's say this y intercept right down here. Okay. We've kind of skipped that one. So it does cross the y intercept. Well, what's something kind of interesting about the y intercept that we know is that the x value of it is actually equal to zero. So what we can do here is if you go trace, sorry, second trace, and then go to value. And we put a value of 0 in. I'll show you what happens. Do you see how the graph focused right in on this point right here? That tells you that that is at 0, 10 right there. So that's a way how you can find always the y-intercept. So finding the y-intercept is a little bit different than finding the x-intercept. So these were your x-intercepts. This is your y-intercept, like so. Okay. Now, the question originally said, identify and explain the significance of the intercepts. Well, let's talk about this. Remember that we're shooting a projectile of some sort. All right. So we're launching it up. It was launched from, let's say, right around here. And of course, we had the graph like so. Let's talk about the maximum, what this means. It means that since the x value, so normally we have x, y. For this graph, though, it's actually t and h, right? Where t is your time and h is your height. So what that means is that it, it, it uh, reached a maximum height at 5.102 seconds. All right, so that's when it happened, and the maximum height was 137.551. I believe we were in uh, meters. All right. Now, what else can we say? We have these x-intercepts right here. Well, one of them kind of makes some sense, and the other one doesn't. This one technically means at negative 0.19 seconds, the projectile was at a height of 0. Well, you can't have negative seconds. So this one, essentially, we're going to be ignoring. But this one does make some sense. It basically tells you that the projectile was in the air for 10.466 seconds. All right? And how do we know that? Because it reached a height of 0 right here. All right? So that's when it hit the ground. The last thing that's of importance for us is the y-intercept. The y-intercept tells you at time 0, this thing was at a height of 10. So that tells you that that's where the projectile was shot off of. It was maybe shot off the top of a building, right? And so the building was 10 meters high. Um, and of course, that was at time 0. Okay, so that is the significance of a graph like this. The tough thing, I don't think, is actually finding the significance. It's going to be you guys playing around with your graph and calculator. So I'm guessing we're going to have to review this again in class a little bit. But uh, we'll go through this. And if you have any questions, we'll go from there. Okay? That concludes this lesson.